can't trust Facebook with your data. Facebook works with over 190 marketing partners that work with thousands upon thousands of retailers and advertisers. All of your Facebook data are shared with hundreds of data brokering companies, all of which are equally vulnerable to cyber attacks like the one that happened to Equifax. Data brokers who bought your data from Facebook will sell it with your real life identity to whomever is willing to pay for that without checking the background of their clients. Virtually anyone could buy your personal information in a form of profile with your physical world identity. Your Facebook data these companies hold insecurely on their servers not only includes your public posts, comments and likes, but also your private chats, your browsing history, mobile information and your offline activities like purchases in physical stores. Given the nature of cyberspace, which always favors the attacker, it's perfectly rational to expect that some of these companies were breached and your data were stolen by hackers. Just because you agree to the vaguely written privacy policy upon creation of your Facebook account, your pictures, likes and comments, list of your friends and private conversations you had with them, every website you ever visited, all of your mobile telemetric data, social security number, address, bank records and employment history could be in hands of some rogue foreign governments or shady hacking groups selling your information all over the dark net. The United States government will also take a copy of your personal information just to be sure you are not a threat in any way. No one cares if your private information are exposed to fraud and theft because nobody regulates Facebook tracking and database marketing industry. Simply because you dare to use the internet, your life is traded on an auction like a piece of an archaeological artifact found in an active coal mine. Your security and privacy are decided on by the bidders, trading your private life like it was just a piece of stock. I advise you to watch my breakdown of how and where Facebook collects and sells all of your personal information and online and offline activities. It's really outrageous how Facebook's unregulated business model created a psychological profile on everyone on the internet with AI that can predict your future behavior with near 100% accuracy. Take back your online security and privacy. Today we are going to start with Facebook, the most popular social media platform with over 2 billion monthly active users. What I mean by using Facebook anonymously is to block all attempts of Facebook trackers and potential hackers to steal your personal information to make a profit off of you or cause you some harm. Securing your online presence is like securing your house. You just add layers of security features like multiple locks, alarms and bunch of starving dogs to give criminals more obstacles to overcome before they can get in. The purpose is to increase the amount of time and resources it takes to break in to eliminate number of adversaries. If a thief needs to pick several locks and break through a metal padlock while somehow not waking up your bloodthirsty dogs, it might as well just take so long, someone will notice them and call the police. If for whatever reason you don't want to quit Facebook, you can at least take few steps to take control over how much advertisers and governments can track you through your Facebook account. If you want to protect your online identity and privacy, you are going to have to change some browsing habits. But it's not going to be hard, it's just the fault of the mainstream assumption that 8 character long passwords are secure and you shouldn't worry about who tracks what about you on the internet. Let's start with the assumption you already have a Facebook account that you want to secure. We are going to start with anonymizing your internet traffic and protecting your online privacy by blocking all Facebook trackers. First, you need to understand how Facebook tracks you. If you sign into your account on your first browsing tab and then use the same browsing session to surf the internet, Facebook collects it all. They'll know which websites you visited, for how long, what ads you clicked on, online purchases you made and so on. Facebook uses your assigned identification code to follow you across platforms and even on your phone. If you use Facebook apps, you give Facebook access to know what other apps you have installed on your device and all other personal information Facebook got permission to access. Facebook will take all your private information and match them with your credit card credentials to link your online activities to purchases in physical and online stores. To stop Facebook from doing this, you have to separate your browsing from your Facebook identity. You need a separate browser session for Facebook and everything else and never cross link. In order to achieve that, you need a browser that deletes all Facebook trackers each time you close it, so that when you restart your browser, a new session will start and Facebook won't have any access to your information. There are two ways you can go about this. You can either use Tor for all of your internet traffic, or set up a privacy configured Firefox and have a separate browser for surfing the internet and a separate one for online identity. Entities. If you want to use the first method, sign into your Facebook account over Tor via Facebook's Onion link and learn to close the session before browsing for anything else. Even if you use Tor, Facebook has trackers capable of creating a match about your identity across platforms, desktop or mobile. These trackers can activate if you connect to the clear net without Tor. An observer like the government, hackers or Facebook tracking AI could correlate timings between your connections and crack protection of your identity. That's how modern cryptography gets circumvented. 
They don't break it mathematically, that's too expensive. They just take advantage of bad operation security and user error. You need to make sure all of these trackers are blocked and cookies deleted if you want to keep a distance between you and Facebook. If you log in into Facebook through Tor, your IP address won't be disclosed to anyone who might want to intercept your traffic. Your IP address reveals your physical location and is one of the best ways used for doxing. Provided you don't share your home address with Facebook in the first place, hiding your IP address is going to do a lot to protect your identity. You can download Tor browser for your platform from their website torproject.org. For Android devices, you can install Orbot application, which can be used to route connection of any app on your phone through Tor. You can then use Orfox to browse the web anonymously and access Onion websites. Tor makes it difficult for an observing government agency or an advertiser to correlate your browsing history with the real-life identity. If you want to stay logged in while browsing the web at the same time, and don't want to close sessions so often, you have to compartmentalize. Configure Firefox to block Facebook trackers. You can watch my short privacy tutorial on how to configure Firefox for privacy. There is more you need to do, but for starters, install uBlock Origin that blocks malware, trackers and ads on the web. HTTPS everywhere that prevents major websites from making insecure connection to disclose your identity. Privacy Badger is a must to block social media plugins that Facebook uses to track everyone, even after they logged out or don't even have Facebook. If you want to be absolutely sure all Facebook trackers are blocked and are willing to put up a fight for it, you can start interacting with Umetrix. Umetrix is an excellent extension that will put you in full control of what websites can and cannot know about you. You can blacklist Facebook trackers together with Google, Twitter, Microsoft, Apple and others that you might come across. You can choose which content you want to allow to run. For example, if you frequently visit YouTube, you can set up Umetrix to allow to fully load the page on each visit. Everywhere else on the web, Umetrix will block all trackers Google will plant on websites. If you want to watch a YouTube video on an external website, you can choose to allow it using Umetrix. The same usage is for Facebook. You can allow Facebook to load when you actually want to use the site, but be free to block all of its tracking cookies, social media plugins, ads and analytics tools that almost every website uses. When you read an article and the page has a Facebook like button on it, Facebook ads and analytics tools that are invisible to you, Umetrix will block those unless you specifically allow them. Facebook won't be able to track your browsing history. Your second choice of browser for online identities can be Tor, but if for some reason you don't like it, either use Brave, which has built-in protection against trackers, or Pale Moon, which is same as Firefox, but based off of an older version. Also, configure Pale Moon with same add-ons as Firefox. I say this is a privacy configuration, but this is also essential protection from malware, hackers and viruses on the internet. In some cases, it's even better than an antivirus, because this configuration will stop a lot of malware from getting into your computer from the web in the first place. Governments and hackers can also attempt to display malicious ads and cookies on your browser so that they can get inside your device, and this privacy protection will stop that as well. Despite all this protection, Facebook might still be able to track some of your data through partnerships with its immense arsenal of third-party trackers. So let's give them some fun! You can use makeinternetnoise.com to flood your browsing data with a bunch of random nonsense. Good luck for the AI to figure out your real browsing habits. If you cannot opt out from their spying, then you can at least roll them into an oblivion. The last step to secure your account is to use two-factor authentication. But there is a catch. Facebook really wants to know your real physical phone number so that they can better confirm match of your advertising ID to your real identity. That's why they bought WhatsApp for so much. To have the biggest database of phone number registry on mobile users that can be tied to Facebook's massive marketing database. However, if you enable two-factor authentication with your real number contracted to your real name, you are not giving yourself too much security anyway. SMS messages are not secure or encrypted and there have been way too many cases how two-factor authentication was bypassed because of this. To get that extra security without sacrificing your privacy, I'd suggest you only enable two-factor authentication on Facebook if you can get a number that doesn't have your name on it. There are ways you can buy prepaid SIM cards that don't require activation with your name. Get one of those and use it only for verification messages and nothing else. If somebody wanted to get your messages, they wouldn't be able to find your number based on your name. I don't have Facebook and if you have one, I'm going to assume that featuring this tutorial by EFF on how to enable two-factor authentication will be enough for you. Link will be in the description as well. Another good security measure is to have a separate email address just for Facebook. Your Facebook account is probably going to be primary target for hackers. Similarly to having an anonymous phone number, if your email address doesn't tie back to your real name, it's a plus. I would also suggest not to use this email address for anything other than confirming and securing your Facebook account. If you choose ProtonMail for your Facebook address, you can integrate encryption for messages you receive from Facebook. There is a lot of sensitive information in emails Facebook sends to your mailbox. A hacker could intercept them in transit and read your password recovery links 
Facebook notifications and personal information. ProtonMail and Facebook PGP partnership offers you to enable encryption as another layer of security. No protection is 100% unbreakable. If you are on the radar for someone with enough resources and patience, they are going to get to you. That's why you need to be prepared when that happens. To maximize your cyber defenses, you will need to work on your operation security. You will need to evaluate your threat model and make sure that even if someone is listening in, they cannot make any sense of it. But we'll go over that on my channel in the future. We will also cover how to create Facebook account anonymously and whether that's even possible. Another video in the near future will explain how to create long passwords and passphrases. Regarding your Facebook ID tracking your smartphone, I will take a look at smartphone privacy and make some tutorials on how to protect your mobile personal information. I might have left out some points so please feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below. I will try to answer all of them which shouldn't be difficult considering the insignificant size of my channel. I'm happy for each new subscriber. I know it must be hard for you to listen to me, so thank you very much for liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing. <laughs>